What we have built, as many have said, is beyond a traditional library. It's also a technology center. More importantly, the dream has never been just about bricks and mortar. Today is not a mere celebration about a building or the technology within it. It's about having community access to possibilities that we have only started to explore. Let's all explore together. This is a huge step forward for this community. Education and technology and learning has always been important. But in the world we live in now, it is more important than ever. And Fort Francis should be proud that it has taken a leadership role and is really well positioned for that 21st century economy. Congratulations all around and Joyce, thank you for being so stubborn. It was a moment 15 years in the making. On June 21, 2010, the Fort Francis Library and Technology Center held its grand opening to the people of Fort Francis. The day was a celebration. The ceremony was a recognition to those who tirelessly worked over the years to ensure that this day became a reality. Adversity was a common theme throughout the entire process of planning and building the library and technology center. People are always afraid that something of the atmosphere that we've had here will be lost. Uh, we feel quite confident that that will not happen, uh, that we will still be able to serve the patrons in the way that they have become accustomed to, uh, but we will be able to do more than we are doing now. In 2008, the project gained significant momentum. Shaw Cable surprised the building committee and donated $175,000 to the local project. The library building committee exceeded their public donation goal, raising over $825,000. But then, a near fatal blow to the project in April of 2009. Canada was faced with a recession, and the local logging industry had reached a low point. This prompted the town to vote against the library project as it finally reached council. If the economic times were better, it would have gone ahead probably as is. Defeat was in the eyes of the library board and chairman Joyce Cunningham. Well, I guess I said last Monday night that if it was defeated, there'd be a few tears shed and um, there already have been. Uh, and there will be more. Maybe other people can pick it up and move forward. Um, the library board decided to give the project one last shot and applied for stimulus funds offered by the government to combat the very recession that had nearly left the library and technology center for dead. They succeeded and through the Build Canada Fund received nearly two million dollars for the project, equivalent to the remainder of the funds needed for the project to break ground. Public libraries can be a bit of a puzzlement to a lot of people. I mean, we're in the digital age, and how is it that the public library is more popular, more frequently used, more deeply loved than ever before in this digital age? I mean, shouldn't it be dead? Isn't it dying? Uh, because I come from a university, from a research-based institution now, I have to talk about the evidence about this. And I was just listening to a radio show about technology recently, and that question was asked, you know, what about the public library? And the answer given by a person who was interviewed said, you know, in a world that seems sometimes to value things and use people, we have created in this society, public libraries, an enduring institution that through all the changes in its environment, including its technology environment, continues to love people and use things.
As the first day of the grand opening began to wind down, nighttime festivities were in order. A performance by the Borderline Orchestra kicked off the night. The library then closed its doors and opened its floor to a reception. Gifts were presented to the library and organizers, and the atmosphere that followed gave those involved a less formal opportunity to celebrate. I'm going to get Terry here, I know. <laughs> it is an honor and a pleasure to present this picture. The spirit of the grand opening was not lost after the historic opening day. It carried itself well into the week as celebrations and activities continued in an aim to introduce and share this very special place with many in the community. In the morning, can't you hear the captain shouting? 